an entire episode movie length. This yapping, bro. Yapping. But so hype. Because the world building, the dialogue, the substance talked about, the soundtrack, it's all just hyping up this battle royale. What is the point of Fate Zero? Well, I might not be entirely correct, but at the end of the day, we need candidates to fight for the Holy Grail War. That's gonna happen in Fuyuki City in Japan every 60 years. Of all the candidates, Kiritsugu and Kirei's mutual glaze was so stupid hype. Both are just reading off the dialogues like, oh my god, this guy, this guy just like abandons everything. This person just has no pride as a mage. It's just like, oh shit. And they're like, I, this man, he, he fucking scares me. Kitsugu is an idealistic person who is a mage hunter. Doesn't seemingly use magic, snipes, assassination attempts, explosions, bombs, po like poisoning. Like this guy is a fucking terrorist. He might have caused 9-11. And then on the other side, we have... Kotomi Nikire, who is just a man of God who seems to not have a purpose in life and is just doing what his dad told him to do. There is some weird collusion going on at the top with um, Kirei's dad and Tosaka Tokiomi. Like, how the fuck are you like heretic hunters, meaning you hunt down mages, but you guys at the top brass of the church and the magic association. I know that Tokiomi isn't the head of the magic association, but the Tosaka family, they're elites. How are they friends? Maybe there's like evil magic hunters. Like, sorry, evil magic users that are like the heretics. That's why it's not just like kill every magician. Maybe that's more like that, but they're cheating. <laughs> and like, Kine is like, so doesn't, is, isn't this kind of odd that like my dad is the referee and I'm also participating, but like I'm, just being used to help you out. And then Tokyo is like, so about that. And then they start walking. <laughs> the whole walking scene was actually so hype. Both dad and Tokyo me circling Kirei just to tell him the entire plan. And I wonder if there is something that Kirei will figure out for himself, right? Because he has seemingly no ambitions, no desires, but he might want something. That's what was hinted for Kiritsugu, right? And for Kiritsugu's end, it's just like, what is really his ideals and dreams? Something about making sure no one has to ever cry like that. He also seems to be like Shin from 86 in terms of chasing death, put himself in risky situations because he feels like he's a sinner that needs to seek atonement. That's why him putting himself on the front lines and all these dangers, somehow this is supposed to be like his atonement. Maybe. Other characters? Um... Archibald guy got his relic stolen. I'm not sure if he's gonna come in. Waver <laughs> manipulated a whole fucking grandpa and grandma with magic. The mages are absolute trash. He pulled a fucking five star unit. Iskander Alexander, right? Uh, a rider. What else is there? That's pretty much it. There is like one s slot that's missing though, right? Kadia. I think that Kadia's motivation is the best because everyone else seems to be fighting for fucking frivolous superficial ambitions but Kadia is like i need to save sakura but do you know a guy like that's gonna fucking die at the end he has one month left to live uh theme of the story moral of the story mato family sucks they're evil as fuck the warm shit is gross and there's still one slot that's missing we're waiting for that one extra slot i don't know who that's gonna be but hey let's figure out today's reaction waiver Hey, Ryder, what's going on, bro? Giga Chad. Giga Chad, bro. Baga! So, he's supposed to be Alexander the Great, but he's also known as Iskandar. Same thing of King Arthur versus Artoria. Am I wrong? Is he supposed to be Alexander the Great in the heroic spirits, or that's wrong and he's just Iskandar? Baga! He needs to laugh like Blackbeard. Give me a ze ha ha ha, bro. I love this voice actor. Yeah. Alright, you can kind of see his philosophy, right? You can't just like sneak in there like a pussy, bro. I'm a fucking conqueror, man. I'm a king. I'm a dude as bold and proud. <laughs> Spirit form now? So he can like, they're like Pokemons, right? So right now he's in this Pokeball in the spirit form. He can't obviously have a physical manifestation, so he just kind of just stored away. Oh shit. 
We're supposed to do every fate opening reaction one of these days. Fuck, I forgot about that. I mean, we're like 10 episodes, like, we're, we're so ahead in SAO that I don't think it really matters too much, so... If the opening, let's just listen to it. I don't really mind, but I'm not gonna really pay attention. We'll do a full every fate opening reaction one of these days too. <sighs> Weaver. <sighs> See the world now. The Odyssey. What war? Holy Grail? Sir? We are in Japan. Uyuki City. Tokyo. <laughs> no Macedonia Persia to conquer here, sir. <laughs> Wrong timeline. <laughs> now that! Is a conqueror's disposition, bro. Look at that shit. You're supposed to be the master, but one glance when you said I'm your master? Are you sure? Are you my master, bro? <laughs> Sit your ass down, boy. Hmm. I actually have no understanding of history. I'm very ignorant in terms of geography and history and stuff like that. So when great when Alexander the Great conquered all those places like Macedonia and Persia, right now in the modern times, would he be disappointed of how it turned out? For example, let's say he conquered those places and it's all his and now in the modern times it's no longer his and it turned to something else, therefore he'd be super depressed of like, oh man, that's my shit and it's all gone now, right? <laughs> Uh oh. You just realized how big the world actually is? That's a humble person, huh? Instead of being mad that like he was like a like a frog in a well, he's like, oh, huh, that's funny. He's such a positive guy. How? Why only West? We can't leave! The battle royale is here! Imagine Ryder just fucks off? What happens actually when heroic spirits just refuse to fight and just leaves? Let's say in this battle, Ryder just fucking left. I don't know. And yeah, he, I think he's assuming that the world is flat. Just go west only. You're gonna come out east one of these times, bro, if you, if you go west enough. Alright. <laughs> kind of. I don't think so. Yeah, what's your wish? What is your wish? No, 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 no. Chill. I'm not aiming for the world, bro. What does Waver want? He entered this because he saw this as a form of meritocracy to prove his worth as a mage, despite being from a family of mages that's pretty young compared to Archbolt, right? But beyond that, what is your wish? That's it? I'm sorry, bro. Katya is the only person that deserves to win. <laughs> Waver's wishes are so fucking insignificant to Katya. Like, bro, you just have a fucking... Oh, people bully me! There's a lecturer that thinks I'm trash! I want them to look at me with respect! <laughs> Get that shit out! Get this fucking high school drama out of here, man! <laughs> deserved! Deserved! <laughs> What a small wish! Also, that's kind of crazy. Waver's glutes are fucking un in, in another level. BBL. Waver BBL. He's insulted! Simply prove it with their actions. <laughs> Is Gondor confirming that height does matter? You want people to fucking respect you by default? Just be tall, man! <laughs> Wait! But... Waver... The caster Waver that I know in FGO is pretty fucking tall. So he is gonna get a growth spurt. Now, I don't know how the command seals are gonna work. 
Because in FGO, you fuck up a round, you can use it up to three times a day before free. And then you use same course to refresh, but fuck that, I'm not gonna do that shit! I'm saving for my mother- I'm saving for my MILF Mama Raiko. But in this show... <laughs> do you have a daily limit? Or if you use one, like you only have three for the entirety of the war. Like, do not waste it here, you idiot. He's a fucking retard. Oh my god. Waver, come on. Good, good. Catch yourself. Three times. For the whole war. No daily resets. Okay, good. We're catching him. I think Waver's a fucking piece of shit right now. But that's the whole point. For him to have development. I'm sure as he is influenced by Iskander and grows more, he's gonna be a totally different character by the end. Cause like I refuse to believe Waver just gonna be this fucking idiot the entire time. Okay. He's crying. <sighs> Never mind. Yeah, he's the king of conquerors, man. Nah, I'd win. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I actually... I don't remember his noble phantasm. What the fuck does he... He might have like a chariot? Doesn't a bunch of horses... I forget what his animation looks like now that I think about it. Maybe it's better that way. Like, I... I think I remember him like riding a chariot, but beyond that, it's just like, what the fuck is his power? Oh. Okay. The lights are going crazy. One slash. Oh, hey, what the fuck? Did you just cause a storm with your sword slash? He affects the weather? What? Oh, he summoned it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a chariot I'm talking about, not horses. What are these, like bulls? King Gorias made this very offering to Zeus. Oh shit, we're getting some fucking lores about this chariot thing. I mean, he is a writer. He writes this shit. Okay. Giga. He literally said, I'll 1v2. Fuck it. Until then, I'm gonna read this map, boy. Now, imagine summoning Zeus as a heroic spirit. Is that possible? I think I stopped playing FGO around the same time. Same time um, summer BB banner came up. That was my last summer. Yeah. So all my knowledge of characters is beyond that, but Zeus does exist in FGO, probably. Kinetsuko <gasps> daughter! This is uh does she have a name? Iliaville? I forget. Oh Mitsuketa. Airi and Ilya. <laughs> so Prisma Ilya then is centered around her. She's the main character? A uh, Prisma Ilya? Okay. It's very cute and it's kind of strong. One one. <gasps> Two one. What is it? Yeah, yeah, Ilya. Did he just gaslight this poor child so that he could win this fucking game? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> You're cheating! <laughs> Scam! What a fraud! She calls him Kitsugu instead of Kosan. This is highlighting Kiritsugu's personality. That remember, this is the guy that took down an entire airline because there was one target there. This man will do any underhanded tactics to overcome any challenge. Right now is an example of his personality traits, bro. <laughs> He's willing to cheat against a fucking child at this game to win. Don't cheat no more. No cheating? 
また勝負してあげる光栄でありますお姫様イリア、reminds me kind of Rin in terms of like the bold, strong toddler energy. セイバー何を見てるのセイバー。外の森で、ご息女とキリツグが戯れていたもので。だ、mm-hmm. 私のマスターは、もっと冷酷な人物。コーラ、didn't you just see? キリツグ just gaslight a toddler to win in a game by cheating? He is a cold, ruthless killer. だか無理もないわよね。あれがキリツグの素顔よほど不協かったのです。Offended him? What happened after you got summoned? 何も笑うなさいね。召喚された時のこと、まだ気にしてるのかな ?What happened? She said the signature saber line of Are you my master? That's just like an iconic fucking type moon phrase for a saber, I think. And then the show ended. What happened after? いささか Maybe he said no, I'm not your master. You're just a fucking tool? Because he said that he figured out the most optimal way to use this heroic spirit. That's what he said last episode. And the interesting thing is, again, if you imagine this heroic spirit to be Pokemon, right? It's not just the Pokemon's battling. Kiritsugu himself can battle too. Same with Kirei, right? Waver, I'm not really sure, but like, it's not just like the Pokemon's battling. The Pokemon masters can battle. So, like, how are we going to fight together? Saber doesn't seem to trust Kiritsugu much. <laughs> あれほど驚くこともないでしょう。そうは言ってもね。I mean, shit, you said that we're summoning King Arthur, then a wife who showed up. Of course we're shocked. Yeah. アーサー王の伝説は。King Arthur, and then a blonde wife who anime girl showed up. キリツグには侮られているのでしょうか。You're a woman, but you're also a father. でも、そうね。What? それは別の理由でしょうね。別のあなたを囲んでいた人たちに対して。Around. The lore of King Arthur. I don't know anything actually, but the lore is it was a young king due to the previous ruler probably dying and then having the only heir to ascend to the throne at such a young age. So Kiritsugu is being very empathetic here and actually feeling for Artoria because she was forced to do that by. A council of fucking boomers? So they were the Himonai Kotodista. Iwano Ken Unukto Kikara. What does Mokaku go? Excalibur? So Nahuni and Natanga Ume, okay? Like, what do I know about King Arthur? I don't know shit. I know that Excalibur, right? And I know Merlin. Like, like, there's like Merlin and King Arthur lore as well, right? And we kind of know that Merlin gave our, like Saber a dick to <laughs> have a kid. But like, Beyond that, I don't know shit. Don't judge my past. You don't know me, you parasocial freak. That's not good. <laughs> the relationship between master and servant here does not even exist. <laughs> What the fuck? This is not a good start, but. But, like, Kiritsugu is aware, right? He must, he has a plan to make sure this is gonna work perfectly. That's not a good start, man. Not a good impressions. First impressions. That's right. Dreams and ideals. We have the same wish. King Arthur couldn't protect Britain in the past? Shobu. I don't know how long the Holy Grail War lasts. Two weeks? Oh, wait, we know how long it's gonna last. 260 something hours. Mom will be back for a while. I mean, like the first thing we saw in episode one was. Aidy. You will die because of me. And I just feel was like, yeah, I know. So <laughs> it's looking like she's never coming back. Like, Kadia, bro. Yeah, she's dying. Yeah, she's dying. <laughs> and like, if Kiritsugu also dies at the end, both mom and dad are gone, and this kid's alone by herself. Damn. 
She's going to have a tragic upbringing too. Like fucking Sakura. I think Sakura has it worse. Absolutely. But like, it's not looking too good for our girl I reveal here. Ilya, Ilya. His eyes are so dead. You better come back home, bro. All right, that's a promise. You better come back. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's coming back. To give her a false hope like that, is that cruel? This is just all sad. But still, I think that Kadia and Sakura is sadder in this. Final candidate. This is the exact same incantations that Waver said at the beginning of the last section of last episode, the hype summoning part. Who is this? Did that repeat four times? There's a couch with two heads there. There's a guy drawing the incantation circles with his feet. With what exactly? Probably their blood? So is this guy... The root cause of the murders that we saw on the TV last episode. Remember what I said? Every time the news is playing in an anime and they're having casual conversations over the new broadcaster, the broadcaster is saying some important shit. Children are going fucking missing, right? The people are fucking dying, so this guy is it? He doesn't even know the fucking chant. Uh, sure, fuck it, five times. Three murder scenes. A mysterious pentagram drawn with the victim's blood was found. It sounds like exactly what we're doing right now. He has an obsession with drawing pentagrams on the ground with blood? I wonder why. Like, he is also... Because he has this book. I don't know where he got the book from, but this is uh, teaching him how to actually summon... But before that, maybe he was just kind of like, he loves like occult shit and like summoning shit. Yeah, those bodies are dead. Who are we summoning? What kind of monster? There's a kid! But he's trying to actually summon a demon? True. Think about the demons, guys. Have some respect for the demons. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm gonna like this guy. First of all, he's already torturing a kid. <laughs> you know how much of a fucking demon I am regarding, you know, child abuse and anime. <laughs> His voice acting, I don't know, but like, he seems unhinged, right? I love unhinged, crazy psychopaths in anime. He seems just like that. <laughs> yeah, what'd you find? He just found it in the storehouse. So maybe he does have some, like, maybe his magical affinity is low, but like he is from like an old mage family. Ancestors were researching how to summon demons. Okay. That's why you kept the kid alive? Because the parents are dead. But you want an offering. It would be rude to the demon. You're right. We should feed the kid. Yeah. You're, you're the food. Would you mind? It's not like you have a choice. Huh? The grail has chosen him. The final candidate. Is a fucking serial killer, bro. <laughs> oh my! Who is it? Hmm? Who is it? Oh! Yeah, you got the best voice actor for this shit, too. Yeah. Yeah, we got a fucking maniac. <laughs> Both master and servant are fucking maniac. You can already hear by how he said the first couple lines, bro. Yeah. 
何者なるや In FGO, um, there is a story quest that I did kind of pay attention. It was the Knights of the Round Table arc. And there is a dude that looks like this guy who simps really hard for Jean. But that guy was not a caster, but there could be multiple different versions of him. This guy reminds me of him. He loves Jean, right? Yeah, 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 that was the fucking lore. He would do anything for Jean. Gillis or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't look exactly the same, but the facial structure, it's reminding me of him. The one from FG was probably the Saber version. This is the caster. <laughs> so I'm uh, unemployed, and I like killing people, pretty much. Oh, my master! You are so cultured. Nice. I'm also unemployed. <laughs> unemployed likes killing people, specifically kids and young women. <laughs> what a standout character, huh? The Grail. He doesn't know shit about the Grail, huh? Because like, he has no understanding of the Holy Grail War. He just knows about demon summoning because his ancestor used to do it, which implies that maybe he is from a mage family. And luckily, he just got the fucking command seal, so now he has summoned a demon, which is a spirit, a fucking a heroic spirit. Like, is 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 he gonna have to teach him about the fucking Grail War then? <laughs> Wanna eat this kid? <laughs> yes. Are you gonna eat him? Oh, so good. Human skin. No. What Cthulhu? Cthulhu? Cthulhu Photogen. Cthulhu is an underwater fucking beast, like that huge tentacle octopus kraken like monster, right? Uh -huh. What are you gonna do, mister? Oh god, someone stop him! Oh. oh. Did I just judge him by the cover? He's letting him go. Shit. My bad, bro. Really, mister? Huh. Okay. Thanks, mister. You saved me from a serial killer. Just... <laughs> He got me. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. What, what is he gonna do? Leave the poor kid alone! Run, kid! Run! You're so close! This somehow reminds me of Oshinoko episode 1. Someone's about to die. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Cthulhu? Is that Cthulhu? That jump scare was out of fucking nowhere. What the hell? <laughs> Thank you for the meal. Are you really telling me right now that you intensely gave him hope so that just when he thought he got out, you get his ass, therefore the terror is even better? He is literally telling us how to, like, experience the sacrifice in the best way. Oh my gosh! You give him hope, and then you pull him under when they think it's gonna be okay? Yes. Hope to despair. Yeah! Subarashi! Holy shit. This dynamic duo, man. Master and Servant are just on point. The exact opposite of Kiritsugu and Saber. Kiritsugu and Saber fucking hate each other, I think. But like, 
This? Well, maybe Kirisuke doesn't hate, but like, they'll never see eye to eye. These two are fucking soulmates. They're just a match made in hell. Very understanding. What is her dream? Yarn Simp 69. Bluebeard? I thought he would say Gillis, but okay. Bluebeard. Is there some lore secret about Bluebeard, or is that spoilers that I should not know about? Is that supposed to be some sort of like well known historical figure in the past? Bluebeard. I know Blackbeard, that's a pirate! But Bluebeard, no, I don't know. Tokyo me Akira's. Alright, Hassan. Wait. Why is he saying Hassan to Tosaka family household and saying avoid traps? Aren't we allies? Why are you invading your allies, please? Is, so, Kire does have his own ambitions. I, I thought that he... Because, like, his character last episode seems to be a person that has no personal interest in anything. He is this just blank template, just being told what to do by his dad. He learns everything, cast it away without second thought. And he just moves forward to be a useful tool for Tokiomi, but it's looking like he might have figured out what he wants, right? Because I'm trying to think of like, Kire, do you have your own personal ambitions or are you just going to be a fucking robot bodyguard for Tokiomi? But it's looking like if Hassan's going in, uh, we're doing a little backstabbing? <laughs> Hassan versus Gilgamesh? Why no fear? One of the three great knight classes. What's the three great knight? I'm gonna assume that it's a uh, saber archer. What's the other great class? I don't know. Because there's lancer caster, rider, assassin. Is it lancer really? Is lancer that hype? Huh. I thought that Lancers are a little bit like fucking losers. Like, isn't there like an FGO meme of like Lancers being super fucking unlucky? I swear to God, there is. Like, you telling me that guy is like Lancers is supposed to be super great? Okay. Alright. Oh, also! We're forgetting. Tokiomi, Kirei, Kiritsugu, Waver. Ryunosuke? Karia? Where the fuck is Archibald summon? Where the fuck is Archibald summon, bro? We didn't see anything with Archibald. Waver took Archibald's relic. And we saw nothing beyond that. But apparently, seven has been done. So, like... Okay. Kiritsugu Saber? Tokiomi... Archer? Kire Assassin, Waver Rider, Ryunosuke Caster, Karia Berserk, only Lancer, only La so it's gotta be Archibald. It's gotta be Arch. Why are they hiding this shit? Interesting. They're not telling us. <laughs> the backstab. <laughs> Tosaka Rin was correct. Rin was like, hmm, I just can't trust you at all, Kire. You promised. Not to slack off and protect my dad. And then, you know what Kirei said? <laughs> oh, I, I can't promise that. That's impossible. So Kirei didn't lie, at least, you know? <laughs> Kirei never, he never said he'd protect him to the death. Kirei was like, yo, that's fucking impossible. <laughs> you know, I can't do that. <laughs> Immediately backstab second episode. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was that?
It looks like these are little magical barrier stones that he just like destroyed with pellets. Yo, Hassan's looking fucking sick, even though he's not even five star. Is this the gem magic? Remember what Tokiomi's thing is? Fire mage, sorry, fire element, but like gem magic or some shit is what was mentioned last episode, right? I see gems here. The barriers are also made by gems. These are all gem magic. Another gem. Whoa! Invisible! Like lethal weapons. He's just fucking dodging all this shit. Ooh. Yo! Hassan! He's so good! Olympic athlete acrobatics! Wait. You think you fuck I think you fucked up there. <laughs> Everything was good. Until this point, I think. I think this is a flag. You, you shouldn't have boasted before you got your fucking thing. Yo, let me sh- Little warm crawling on the ground. Look at that shit. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Yo, Kitty just said, Bro, it's gonna be fine. I got you. Just go in there. Wait. You, you trolled me, Kire. You said I didn't need. What the hell? That's so strong, bro. He has like an infinite fucking armory of weapons to shoot at you, right? We can't put her. Sorry, we gotta look down, guys. We can't look at him, guys. It's so disrespectful to look at him. 172 hours left, and that's today's episode. God damn, bro. The Hassan shit was amazing. It was a flex, the acrobatics, but I think he got a little bit too over eager. Shouldn't have said that was too easy. Fucking Archer shows up, Gilgamesh himself, and oh my god. He shoots him down, calls him a worm crawling on the ground. You do not have the right to gaze up upon my beautiful presence. Shoots down him with fucking... Uh, what the fuck is this? It's like, I always wondered what this power was. Because he just, like, his powers is like, golden gates appear and like, weapon just shoot out. He is one of the strongest fucking units in FGO. And I'm sure in lore too, right? Gilgamesh is fucking so, so powerful. Does that mean that Hassan is dead? So Kirei does no longer have gates of Babylon? Okay. But like, does that mean that like, Kirei no longer has a servant anymore to fight? The, the Kire just... It's... I wonder if he planned this ahead and wanted to test out Gilgamesh's powers. Maybe that was why he sent Hassan in there saying, you got nothing to fear, but... Kire is a very interesting person. Time after time, showing us that he does have his personal desires, actually. The alliance with Tokiomi? Nah. And if Gilgamesh just slayed Hassan, does this not immediately show Tokiomi that, you know, Kire is fucking... Backstabbing you? So is this not a miscalculation on his part? I am not really sure. Other than that, today's episode was just kind of seeing master and servant of how they relate to each other. Waver and Ryder. Waver's got a very small mind, right? He wants other people to recognize him, but I think that Iskander is going to show him that there's different ways to do that and just grow tall, bitch. Kiritsugu showing his underhanded tactics against <laughs> Ilya is fucking hilarious. Saber and Kiritsugu does not see eye to eye. This is not looking good in terms of like affinity between master and servant. I think that Kiritsugu's party is the fucking lowest. Uh, Ryunosuke and Bluebeard? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they are just like fully synchro, bro. They are the miracle team. They are just like fucking perfect combo. <laughs> he realizes that, like, in order to taste the fresh terror, you need to give them hope first. And Ryunosuke's like, oh my god, Subarachi Master. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> yeah, they're despicable beings, I know. But in terms of content, having fun, entertainment, bro. Like, oh my god, this shit's fucking amazing. And then, and then we have... Hassan, Tokiomi, uh, fucking Kiritsu, uh, sorry, Kirei, fucking, uh, Gilgamesh. 
Shinei should be smarter than this. I really wonder what the purpose of this was. But uh, it's looking like Hassan's dead. Gilgamesh took him down. And now your alliance is no longer a thing. Because now Gilgamesh will simply tell them, right? I wonder exactly what the fucking purpose of this is. But... I expect Kide to be more calculating. I don't think that this is a random mistake he made, so we'll let him cook. That's it from me. If you're still here, though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. And until next time, take care.